prepare to be captivated by the business story of the week, hosted by me, Shaheen Shan. Join us on a journey through the twists and turns of entrepreneurial triumphs and setbacks. Immerse yourself in the narrative and witness the magic that turns dreams into reality. This is Business Story of the Week. Welcome, welcome once again. Welcome to Business Story of the Week, where we bring you the brightest and the most motivational when it comes to anything business, anything inspirational to help you in your journey. And today, you you will, guys will find so much more inspiration um, from our guest today. Um, she needs no long introduction, but allow me to introduce her to you guys today. Sarah Centrella is a master life coach. She is a, a motivational speaker. She is a best-selling author. She is known for her expertise in manifesting and mindset training. She has authored several impactful books, including Hustle, Believe, Receive, and Hashtag Future Boards. We are definitely going to be talking about those. Um, these books focus on how to create and manifest your life dream. Sarah's work has influenced a wide range of individuals from professional athletes, celebrities, to people across the globe, across all walks of life. Today, Sarah is the founder and CEO of Viviamo. She has dedicated her career to empowering individuals and improving company cultures. Sarah's journey from struggling to becoming a successful life coach is a testament to her resilience. Her resilience that is going to be shared today and her story and her struggles that she will, she's going to be sharing to us. Sarah, thank you so much for being on here. How are you feeling? You look lovely, by the way. Ah, thank you so much, Josh. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And I'm looking forward to our chat today. Fantastic. Sarah, I, I really want to get into this. The way I do this is like, uh, we always start from the start, right? What was the very start of your story, everyone's journey? And I really want to highlight this because I feel like a lot of our audiences will be able to relate to your story. And I'd like to start it off with this. And I'm, I'm very a big believer of this. There is no more not a more difficult job in the world than being a single mother. It isn't <laughs> so true. A harder job in the world. There really isn't. And the way you've taken that struggle, the way you've started, I, by the way, I watched your documentary. Receive. It's fantastic. I, I love, love it. it. And I just want everyone else also to experience that same kind of say inspiration. Right. So tell us about, how you've struggled and how you've come, how you started your journey as a struggling single mother of twins. Yeah. Might I add? Right. And to becoming the successful coach and author, your journey, you really highlighted how, how you were so happy to finally become an author. Yeah. Share to us how your experiences shape your approach in manifesting Absolutely. your life. Yeah, absolutely. So um, kind of everything I'll share today makes a lot more sense when I do start at the, the beginning because all of this started with an incredible rock bottom moment for me. Oh, um, I would say it was kind of like a bomb was dropped in my life and everything exploded. Oh, uh, this was back in 2008. <clears throat> and at the time I was married to my high school sweetheart. We had been together for 16 years, married for eight and had three kids. Our, our twins were right about a year and a half old and our son was five and a half and uh, one day he came home and while he was in the shower cleaning up for dinner i found a text message that was the bomb that uh exploded in our life and i found out that he had been having an affair and it ended our marriage in no lie 10 minutes i went in turned the water off on the shower to get the you know what out and 10 minutes later, he's throwing his ring at me, kissing the kids goodbye, and it's over. And oh, wow. I remember when 
he left that night. I had been obviously like beside myself crying the whole nine. And, um, at one point I'm laying on the floor and I'm just sitting there going like, Oh my God, what do I do now? And let me just remind everyone, this was 2009. There was no Facebook. There was no social media. Oh, wow. The only people you knew back then were like the 50 people in your actual life. Exactly. Right. So I had never known anyone who had even been divorced. I was the first of my friends to get oh, married. Wow. So I had no, I felt oh, like I was goodness. the only human in the world where this is happening to, um, no one to relate to, uh, was completely on my own. But worse oh, than wow. that is we had just had a financial you know, blow out from the housing oh, market. No. We'd lost our house in foreclosure. We had just filed bankruptcy after the twins. I hadn't worked for two years. So like, it was the perfect shit storm. Like everything felt like it had been stripped away that wow. night. I mean, I barely, you know, we were barely hanging on as a thread before. So oh, wow. as I'm laying there, I'm just sitting there going, what do I do now? Uh -huh. And my brain's trying to solve the emergency problem. I can't even think about right, the fact right. that, you know, the betrayal in my life blew up on that end. I'm just like, where do I get formula? How do I get diapers? <laughs> <laughs> like, where's rent money going to come from now that I have, don't even have $5 to my name. And as I'm sitting there and I'm running through all these scenarios, my brain is just like, I can't, I can't, there's literally no way to do this. How do I get a job when it uh -huh. takes my entire salary, you know, for daycare for these three kids? Oh, and as I'm laying there, there was this kind of moment. And to me, it was the moment that that saved me because I think there was there's always a pivotal choice in all of our lives, especially when something devastating happens where we okay. can either completely fall apart and choose a path of destruction, or we have some sort of moment that gives us hope and inspiration to take a different path. And for me, as I was sitting there going like, I can't, I can't, I can't. There was this voice, intuition, God, I don't care what you want to call it. To me, it was just a super strong thing that came back and was just like, well, uh -huh. what if you can? So wow. if you could, what would you do? Uh -huh. And it was that tiny little life raft in the middle of this black, black storm where I just kept asking myself that question over and over again. Instead of mm -hmm. I can, I was going, well, if I could, then what? Like, so if I could, what would be the first thing I would do? And it just started right, like right. digging me out, honestly, like day by day on figuring out how to just survive initially and then eventually how to build a brand new life because it was a life I had never spent three seconds oh. ever imagining before that moment in time. And so <laughs> um, it is actually one of the things that I teach now because mm -hmm. there's two words, what if, if they're used in the right context versus the negative context, they are incredible door openers. Uh -huh. And so just by saying, well, what if I could do this? What if I could be successful? What if I could still be a good mom, even though it, this is not the family I intended it to be? So all of those questions help me redefine, rebuild, and eventually start to dream again. That That is a lovely story. Uh, Sarah, thank you for sharing that, that because really it's, I cannot put it into words how rock bottom must, that must have felt. I, I, I really like to highlight the way you said in your struggle, like you didn't even have time to think about <laughs> I don't, I don't think I thought about that for probably two years. I was just like, this is survival. I can't even oh, think goodness. about what just happened to my marriage. Like, you know. Yeah, precisely. You have tw you have twins to take yep. care of, let alone start thinking of your marriage falling apart. It's just really a testament to how you've recovered. And I love that you always mentioned or I love that you mentioned the what if I also watched that video of yours and you were uh, I think it was a webinar that you were talking yeah. about it there. Um uh, before we get into a lot of your, uh, we're going to talk about the board behind you, but I, I really want to touch up on that a little more, the what if and how it kind of drives your, how it drove your past yeah. to the future that you have now. And what do you think was the, you were mentioning about the pivotal moment, that pivotal moment where what if I can do this? What if I can, you know, achieve this? And was that being an author 
or was there a more specific pivotal moment for you? What was that what if moment? I mean, there's been so many along mm-hmm. the the way for sure. I think the initial one was once I started, you know, getting the logistics uh, of my life sort of back together and got a job. Um, I started really thinking, well, hey, what if I could build a new life? And I actually mm-hmm. like this life better than the last one. In other words, what if all the dreams that I had when I was younger, hey, maybe they could still happen? Because I think in my marriage, I definitely let go of most of my personal dreams, had really kind of got to a place where it was living Groundhog Day over and over again, didn't have <laughs> a lot of goals or anything like that. And so the idea of what if kept, just kept coming to me all the time. And it And it sparked the dreamer in me, which I had always been as a kid. And I wound up using my ability to daydream, which I always thought was a negative thing. You know, daydreamers get a lot of shit. Um, And as a kid, I used it as a coping mechanism to create a better environment than what my day-to-day life was as a kid. And so I think without even really understanding it or realizing it, I began to do that exact same thing in this dark period. And so whenever the day to day was too much for me to take, or it was just too dark and too hard, I would live in this fantasy world of what if I was successful? What if I had the money to go on vacation? And here I am like struggling to pay the grocery bill, you know, like hoping my card doesn't decline. But in my mind, I'm like, well, what if I was on vacation with my kids? Or what if I sold that big deal at my new job and and got that commission? Or what if I felt really good and had confidence, like, wouldn't that be crazy? And so the more that I did that, the more I started like creating these visual alternate almost realities in my head that honestly just made me feel better. That was the only real reason behind it is it felt better than living in the darkness. And one day at my, my new job where I was literally like working in a closet, I, when the boss was out at lunch, I just started typing in all these various things that I've been thinking about into Google images back then, because it was before Pinterest Uh and printed out all these pictures of, you know, a family on vacation and Uh what success looked like to me and all of these things. And I just plastered my little cube with it, Uh honestly, just for a decorative element. Cause I was like, I'm here all day. It's really depressing in this closet. Like I need something fun to look at. And so all day, every day I was looking at those and kind of subconsciously dream dreaming about them. Right. Uh And that began to absolutely light a fire under me from a motivation standpoint that was like, okay, come hell or high water. I don't care what I got to do. I'm going to build this life for my family. Like there's no way that I'm going to rob my kids and my new family kind of uh, dynamic from all the amazing things I always wanted them to have Mm -hmm. and the amazing memories I wanted to build with my kids. That became my absolute driving motivation. Uh, I never thought it was going to work. And then about 18 months later, that first board Uh just started coming to life. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? (laughs) (laughs) That is fantastic. So it's really like, so you were kind of stuck in this escape. It was an escape, right? You were fantasizing a perfect world because you're surrounded with so much darkness. It was like, it was, like you said, it was rock bottom and you were escaping into these fantasies. But then you started really thinking about them, it feels like. And it feels like this is the essence of visioning, of vision boarding. You literally took it. You know, you took all those pictures. I remember in your documentary, you went to Disneyland with your kids. Finally, you were like, oh, wow, I've never been here. And now you took them there. And um, I can only imagine this must have been part of that first initial dream board, right? The first initial vision board. So I want to talk a little bit about that. And I know you wrote about this on uh, future boards as well. And we have that little wonderful, not little, not so little, actually, that big, big vision board that you have behind you. Talk to us about how you went from, you know, just putting up pictures on a board and why is it so effective when it comes to manifesting your future life? Yeah. So the first thing I want to say is that what I teach is just so dramatically different than what any of the listeners have in mind when they think Uh of vision boards. 
Um, I call mine future boards. There's a very specific method to follow uh, in doing it. And when you do that, they work in this almost eerily exact way. It's really kind of crazy. And so one of you really hit on it. One of the keys that I unknowingly was doing was spending so much time visualizing. Now I know it's visualizing. Back then I was just like, ah, this is a happy daydream, right? But what I was actually doing is I was building in my mind a reality that I wanted Uh versus focusing on my current circumstances, which was everything I did not want. So if anyone wants a tip, that is your biggest tip. If you can switch your focus from the things that you don't want, probably, in other words, what that is, what's going on today, right? Uh Because probably what's going on today is not necessarily what you want to live for the rest of your life. It's probably monotonous. Yeah. It's probably, eh, right? Probably has stress yeah. and anxiety yeah. and whatever. So if you can shift out of those feelings and thoughts into, I don't care what it is. If, it, if it's a dream vacation, awesome. If it's okay. driving your dream car one day when you, you know, get that first amazing commission check, I don't care what it is. But every time yeah. you're dropping into these daydreams or visualizations of what you want instead, you're calling it into your life. And that was the component that I honestly never thought about, did not think it would work, had no exposure to self-help or personal development whatsoever. So 18 months after he left that first board, I would say probably 50 to 60% of that first board manifest in about a three to four month period. And so I felt like Cinderella. I was like, I just woke up in this crazy alternate universe where I was like NBA, you know, going oh, to NBA okay. games courtside. I wow. um, took my son on, our, on that vacation that I had been visualizing to Hawaii and we swam with turtles and, you know, oh, all wow. of these amazing things. And that first kind of huge bucket that manifest in that first board, the amazing okay. thing was money didn't have anything to do with any of that, which was just mind blowing to me because I still was, you know, as at the bottom, working my way up in corporate sales. I was the bottom tier. I was hardly making enough to support my family, but all of these incredible experiences that I had been daydreaming kept on showing up in my life. And I was like, what? This is insane, right? And so then about, I don't know, six months or a year after that, when I realized I'd manifested so much, I started being much more intentional about it. And I made my second board and I was like, okay, wow, this works. So let me really think about what it is that I want, where I'm going, Uh uh what I'm trying to build. What does that life and lifestyle look like? Um, Uh And then, you know, I've manifested probably 10 boards since then. And, you know, I've taken my kids to seven countries, written three best-selling books. Oh, wow. The list goes on and on and on since then. So it definitely has been life-changing multiple times, multiple iterations. So Sarah, I know you've written all of this in your book, right? And you say you have a very specific set of um, like a rule set yeah. of how you visualize these things. So talk to us real quick. The one, yeah. one visualization, you don't have to tell us everything, but if yeah. there's one visualization method, like right now I have a blank board <laughs> up here, yeah. right? And I want to visualize up in here, but what is one intentional act that I can do, not just yeah. me, but our audience and listeners that I can put up on my board there right now, what would it be? And what would that be that I can do daily, basically? Yeah. So I would say that 90% of my clients or people that I, I interact with don't know how to visualize yeah. properly or correctly. I mean, it's just not a skill that most of us use. Even if you're a dreamer, you still probably don't know how to do it. So one of the ways that you can kind of teach yourself or train yourself um, to get it to work like I'm talking about is pick a word. You could pick a word like success or love or abundance or whatever your words are. We're very kind of word centric right now. Society, I feel like, you know, like we love the quote, we love the mic drop quote, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but no one takes five seconds to think, Hey, wait a second. What does success look like for Sarah in the next three to five years or 10 years? Uh How does that change my life? Right, what am right. I able to do when I've reached that level of success that I cannot do now? How does it impact my family? How right, does it impact right. my day-to-day life? Like maybe maybe it turns me into a workaholic and I'm working 80 hours a week and I've burned the rest of my life down. I don't want that, right? Uh-huh. So when we don't take the time to really identify what some of these things are, a lot of times we'll manifest what we don't want. 
right? right. Or will manifest right. um, something that we thought was going to make us happy and it makes us miserable. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you take the time to sit down, I think a good way to do that is grab a journal or notepad and just first and foremost, start brainstorming. What okay. would some of those moments be? Okay. Right. That would mean, Hey, Ooh, I'm on the path to being successful. Okay. Right. So let's say I wanted to start a business and I wanted whatever my first hundred clients. Uh -huh. Okay, great. What would that actually mean in my real life? So if I had a hundred right. clients and I'm just me, all of a sudden, do I want that? Like I'd be running myself into the ground. I've never seen my exactly. kids. So I want to think about that. And I want to think, no, if I have a hundred clients, I have a team of four or five people who are working for mm -hmm. me. Uh -huh. Now I'm bringing in enough revenue to be able to take that vacation with my kids. I'm able right. to do these things that I couldn't do before. Now, all of a sudden I'm motivated. Now, right. all of a sudden I want whatever that is. That's fantastic. Sarah, I'm definitely going to be starting my vision board after this talk. And I'm, I'm going to encourage our audience and our listeners to grab that book as well. The same way I will also do that as well. But now I want to move on a little bit to what you are currently endeavored at, what you are currently doing with your extensive experience, you know, in coaching, um, uh, uh, working with corporate clients, mm -hmm. right? And you've taken this experience and you've turned it into Viviamo. Yeah. Yes. So um, talk to us a little bit about that and talk to us what, what really started it what formed it and what do you think was the the changing moment where it started to blow up to really blow yeah. up and was it part of your vision board <laughs> absolutely so in in 2020 during covid um kind of after the, the pivot happened and all of that i realized that i was the primary uh clients that i had were all of a sudden corporate executives and okay, before okay. that they were a lot of entrepreneurs athletes things like that and all of a sudden I was like, well, what is going on in corporate America where highly successful people, you know, people in positions of power don't have the tools to live a happy life or live a balanced right. life um, and they need help. What, you know, what's happening here? And, you know, I've been life coaching for a long time. I left corporate, worked my way up to vice president of sales from my inside little cube. Mm -hmm. Um, uh -huh, and uh -huh. left corporate and, and started my coaching business. But up to that point, I was, you know, working with the individual client or doing some group coaching. Right. <clears throat> and all of a sudden I was like, what if corporate America <laughs> realized the value of personal development? Wow. What if they understood what I already know, because I had been using all my own tools to uh -huh, escalate uh -huh. my own career, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, that if a person has an understanding of what makes them happy, if they have a very uh -huh. clear vision of their future, if they know what they're working towards and they also know how to de-stress and how to bring in joy and right. all the things that I teach, isn't that going to elevate them at their job, right? It just kind of made sense to me. And so that's where Viviamo was born. And now I do my exact same coaching method, which is honestly very personal. It's incredibly okay. deep work. Um, I call it transformation boot camp because it is full on boot camp. It is okay. deep, it is tough. Um, and we do those with corporate teams. And this is something wow. that everyone thought I was insane. They're like, there's no way you're going to get coworkers to talk about their money blocks. Uh -huh. Like what? No one's going to do that. No one's going <laughs> to talk about their worthiness blocks or what their dreams are around their freaking coworker. And I was like, exactly. Mm -hmm. they might. And the okay. crazy thing is, is, it is just this most beautiful thing that um, they do. They come together. Uh, they win together. They support each other and connect in a way that Fantastic. I didn't even imagine was possible. So it's been really fun to serve a very different audience with most of the individuals that I coach having never had exposure to the things I teach, which has been really, really fun. That's fantastic, Sarah. And I feel like that's be that's become possible because of the energy and your yeah. story. It's Aww. because of you, yeah. I feel like. And it's like you just radiate this kind of comfort that I feel like, you know, these are corporate executives yeah. or employees. They're not just really, I'm not going <laughs> to share my secrets to my co right? It's so but, funny. It's so funny. Exactly. One of the things that, that I heard a lot in the beginning when I was getting, you know, going through the objection process and forming the corporation and all that. 
was everyone was like, okay, this is cool, but you're really known for vision boards and future boards and all that. You guys aren't going to do this. Like coworker guys, like forget it. They're, exactly. they, we're never going to get their buy-in. And they are bought in on, you know, by episode two or by a session two as much as anybody else. And it's just, it's so beautiful to see because once you have tools that you Uh didn't have before, I'm sorry, it's going to light the average person Uh up, you know, like when you finally have the puzzle pieces that was missing in your life and now you have a supportive environment Uh to cheer you on and you get Uh to know someone in a way you never knew them before. Uh it's almost sacred in a way, right? Like you for want to sure. protect that. You don't want to bring the ego in it. You don't want to bring, sure. you know, <laughs> the drama from work that, into it. You want to keep baggage. it. Yeah, you want to keep it safe. For sure. And the, the support in the system, the environment is that. That is what I say. I think that is what you set up. That is what people are feeling around you. Um, Sarah, we are getting close to wrapping this up. I would like to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about what are your plans? What's, what does the future look like for you? Talk to, talk to us a little bit about that big board, but yeah. what is it that, that, that it is that um, uh, talk to us briefly about what it is that your plans or your aspirations moving forward and anything else that you would like to tell the audience. And of course, let us know where we can find you. Yeah, I would, you know, my dream and my vision is to grow Viviamo, to Uh grow, I train coaches right now um, that that work with me, um, but to really impact corporate America in a humongous way. And and Uh by doing that, of course, we're impacting those individuals' homes and their families. And, you Uh know, that to me is uh, an incredible gift to be able to do what I do and uh, have that impact. And my board, the board that is behind me is kind of my master future board. It is the plans for the future. It is the life that I'm creating. I would say probably at least half of that I've already manifested. Um, (laughs) So I just kind of keep adding to it uh, every year all the time. Uh, But yeah, my, my long-term personal uh, goal or dream is I'm going to get a Uh villa in Italy that I go back and forth with and my kids and families and uh, I can do retreats there and just, you know, that's the dream. And I keep doing that along with speaking and writing some more books, you know, <laughs> right. That is such a dream to have. And I, I, I think everyone would feel inspired by your stories as well. Not just, not just where you have set roots, but all over the world, you know, you know, if you. you will get there. I have no doubt. Um, Sarah, Tell the audience, let us know where we can connect with you, where we can find you, where we can get your books. And please tell us what else. Yeah. So sarahstrella.com has more info than you could ever imagine. But there's also a great coaching blog on there with tons of my tools. Um, I have Uh a podcast, The Sarah Centrella Show. Um, I do workshops, all kinds of stuff. Everything is there. And then probably the best way to interact with me is on Instagram at Sarah Centrella. Awesome. And I love hearing from everybody and interacting with everyone there. All right, you guys, you heard it here. SarahCentrella.com. Uh, follow on IG, Sarah Centrella. And again, hit that like and subscribe button. Go follow her uh, YouTube as well, where I watch all your videos and your documentaries. Catch Sarah Centrella wherever she might be and be inspired like we have all been inspired today. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us. And I'll just catch you on the next one. Thanks so much, Josh. This was awesome. All right. So here's the thing. We try to get a little bit better every day but we can't do it without you. So if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the space under.